linear recurrence relations. So for this topic, so we work on two types of questions. So the first one, first one, that's something we left before, Tower of Hanoi. Remember, we delay that, the Tower of Hanoi. So that is a simple recurrence relation problem. But we didn't solve it, remember? Yeah. So we derived that recurrence relation. Yeah. So this one, the main equation is this. Yeah. C of n count number of moves yeah. equals 2 times C of n minus 1 plus 1. Yeah. From our pseudocode, we can get this recurrence relation. Okay. So then a the base case. Yeah. How to solve it? This recurrence relation we call the first order recurrence relation. First order, order one. Yeah. 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 Here you can see the left hand side C of n, right hand side C of n minus one. The problem size difference is one. So that's why we say order one. Okay? The Fibonacci recurrence relation, the order is two. Okay? The left hand side, right hand side, the biggest the problem size difference is two. So the order two, yeah. order one easier than order two. Yeah. So let us solve order one recurrence relation first. Yeah. And it's a linear one, linear. Yeah. So you don't see square, you don't see the non-linear term. All terms linear. Yeah. Exponent one, yeah. linear. Yeah. All right, now the question, how to solve? this recurrence relation. Yeah. So here, although it's a simple equation, but you still, you need to apply some special technique. It's not trivial. You still need to apply some special technique. Yeah. So here, let me show you that technique. Yeah. How, to, how to get an insight yeah, here. All right. First, when we Look at the both sides, left hand side, right hand side. Yeah. The structure is quite different. So here the mathematical structures in problem solving very important. We need to take advantage of the special structures. Yeah. Left hand side, C of M function, but right hand side, there is this plus one term. Plus one term. Left hand side, we don't have plus something term. So that difference, that's the structure difference. So the first thing, we want to make both sides have the same structure. Same structure. So we want to fix the structure problem. Okay, yeah, all right. So how to fix that? Here, we need to use some simple operation to make both sides have the same structure. Okay. How to do it? Add one, both sides, right? Yeah. That's the equivalent operation. So let us add one, both sides. The left-hand side, we have C of M plus one. The right-hand side, we have two C of M minus one plus one plus one equals two. Why this is important? Yeah. Remember our goal, we want both sides have the same structure. That's our goal. Yeah. Here, the, after we plus one, left hand side, we have plus something, right? Both sides, they have plus something. Yeah. But now, plus something, we want to make each side it look similar, okay? Look similar, yeah. not quite different. You plus one hundred, you know, then you cannot get similar structure. Yeah. So you have to plus the right number to make both sides look similar. Okay. All right. So here, look at it. two two common factor. We can take that two common factor out. Then 
after factorization, inside the bracket, we have this c of n minus 1 plus 1. Now you compare both sides. Can you see something similar? Can you see something in structure similar, both sides? Okay, yeah. C function plus 1, that structure. How about that? C of problem size. Yeah, that number just problem size. Then plus 1. Both sides, they plus the same number. Plus 1. Okay? So that's the reason we, we add a 1. If you add a 2 or 3, you cannot get this result. Okay? So that's why the 1 is important. Okay? All right. Now, in order to, yeah, so here we have a similar structure. But in order to see this whole picture better, we want to simplify this equation form a little bit. Simplify it. Yeah. So here, how about we introduce a new function called the d function. d of n equals c of n plus 1. Yeah. So we make it one function. Yeah. Yeah. Because after we introduce this new d function, that 1 is gone, right? That plus 1 is gone. Yeah. So we make it simple. We make it look simple, at the least. Yeah. All right. So now, left-hand side, just the d of n. The right-hand side, based on this assumption, right-hand side, it is just 2 times d of n minus 1, right? 2 of d minus 1. Okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Is this new equation much simpler? Yeah. This new one, then we should know how to solve it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because you can, you can go another round. Yeah. Because for this d n minus 1, can you make it 2 times d n minus 2? You do another iteration, right? d n minus 1 equals 2 times d of n minus 2. So here, 2 square times d of n minus 2. How about that? If you do another round iteration, another round iteration, you should get 2 cubed times d of n minus 3. How about that? Can you see some rule, special rule, when we do iteration in this way? Can you see some special rule? Yeah, simple rule. Yeah. Can you see if we keep doing things like this, we can get, if we get to eighth iteration, can we have 2 to the k times d times n minus k? That's the rule. Okay? That's the rule. Yeah. All right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But, now we need to look at the base case. Yeah. Because eventually we need to get to the bottom, the last equation, we should get to the base case. So we need to figure out the, you know, the base case first. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so based on our definition, our d of n equals c of n plus 1. Yeah. This is our definition of d function. Then, the base case, c of 1 equals 1, so that tells us d of 1 equals 1 plus 1 equals 2. That's the base case of the d function, d of 1. Okay? Yeah. All right. Then, when we reach the bottom, when we reach the bottom, we should have d of 1 because we need to hit the base case, d of 1. Then, the power of 2, what is the exponent of the power of 2? Two? 2. 
m minus 1. Yes, m minus 1. Okay? Yeah. So the last equation should be 2 to the n minus 1 times d1, d of 1, that's 2. So that tells us 2 to the n. Okay? So d of n equals 2 to the n. But d of n, based on our definition, equals c of n plus 1 equals 2 to the n. So c of n equals 2 to the n minus 1. That's the solution. 2 to the n minus 1. That's the solution. Okay? That's how we find we solve this simple linear recurrence relation. The first order, simplest. First order, always simplest. In this way. Here, we do this. First, get us warm up. Because our goal for this sub subtopic, we want to solve the second, second order linear recurrence relation for Fibonacci formula. Yeah. Remember our goal, this, mod, this part D, solving that Fibonacci problem, the general formula for the Fibonacci number problem. Yeah. Yeah. So now, let us move to our main topic here. Fibonacci problem. Yeah. But we have the experience here, so we can, you know, get some inspiration from this example. Yeah. All right, so let's move to the Fibonacci number problem. All right. Yeah, so this is the, you know, yeah. yeah. Here, we need to directly solve this recurrence relation. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. First, yeah. Let me give you the full name of this equation. Full name. It's a long name. So what's that? Second order linear homogeneous recurrence relation with constant coefficients. That's the long name for this equation. Okay. Yeah. Second order. Yeah. I explain the second order. Okay. Yeah. So the you know, the size difference of both sides. Yeah. Size difference, too. Okay, second order. Yeah. All right. Linear. Yeah. All terms, linear terms. Yeah. So exponent is 1. All terms, linear terms. Yeah. All right. Homogeneous. Yeah. Another keyword. Homogeneous. What's the meaning of homogeneous? Yeah, here. Look, there is no constant term in this equation. No constant term. Yeah. One plus one plus a number. No. Okay. So if there is a constant term, then we, we cannot call it homogeneous. It's a non-homogeneous. Yeah. But no constant term, so that's the homogeneous. Homogeneous version usually easier than non-homogeneous version. Homogeneous version usually easier than non-homogeneous version. Let's go back to see this homogeneous property in our previous example here. Okay, our original equation plus one non-homogeneous, right? Non-zero constant plus one. Then after we introduce that d function, we get a homogeneous version, right? Yeah. So we solve, so we convert a non-homogeneous recurrence relation to a homogeneous recurrence relation. Yeah. After the conversion, it's easier, right? Yeah. After the conversion, yeah, solving this D version, much easier. Then we go back to the original non-homogeneous equation. Yeah. All right. So that's what we did before. Right? Yeah. Now, for the order two, yeah, we already have a homogeneous version. 
So we don't need to do conversion to eliminate the constant term. Okay? All right. Recurrence relation with constant coefficients. All right. Yeah. So let's write the general expression. Yeah. Yeah. Fibonacci, so that's a special example. Yeah. Here we consider this general question here. A sub k, little a sub k equals capital A constant times little a sub k minus 1 plus capital B times little a sub k minus 2. Yeah. But B cannot be 0. If B equal, capital B equals 0, then we get first order. Right? It's not a second order. It's not strictly second order recurrence relation. So we get a first order, you know, simpler one. Yeah. Here we want to work on the second order. Yeah. All right, so that's assumption. B cannot be zero. Yeah. All right, so for Fibonacci, just A equals B equals one. Yeah. Yeah. Here we want to develop a systematic solution. Yeah. For any capital A, any capital B, we know how to solve it. A systematic method to solve the whole class of problems. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So. The, all right. Solving Fibonacci recurrence relation. So let's work on the the solution. Take a special view. Yeah. So here. So here you can see, for the problem solving, usually we need to spend a lot of time to understand the problem. Yeah. You know, try to do a lot of analysis work to get insight, yeah. to find the right angle to work. Yeah. All right, so here, this special view is important. This special connect to our previous example, the Tower of Hanoi problem. So we need to use our experience from that previous solution. We borrow the similar idea here. Then we try to generalize it, extend it to get a solution for second order linear recurrence relation. All right, so let's uh, here. We consider a sequence. Yeah. So the solution, we should for the solution formula. Yeah. Our goal, we want to write a solution formula for a sub k, right? A sub k. Yeah. Yeah. But if we put all the a numbers in sequence, so we get a sequence. Yeah. So this is understanding part. Okay. Here. We want to take, take a good understanding, good view for the whole problem. Yeah. So when we view the sequence, yeah. Fibonacci number, the sequence, can you imagine, so here, here, yeah. I try to give you some general real world problem solving for this situation, general real world problem solving, okay? All right, so here in general real world problem solving, yeah, there is a commonly used method here. Okay. Mathematical model, we want to make a model for our problem, model. Yeah. So the solution should follow some specific pattern, structure, structure, pattern, so that's our model, okay? Just different words, okay? Different words to describe our current situation. Yeah. Here we use the model, modeling. Yeah. Modeling, typically, when you solve real-world application problems, we need to use some modeling, okay? Yeah. Engineer, for engineers, so they make mathematical model to describe the real-world application problems then solve the model, okay? Here, 
we have a similar situation. Yeah. So we want to make a model. Okay? We want to describe our structure in a special model. Okay? All right. What model do we use here? Here, model equivalent to structure. Mathematical structure. You may ask me, what do you mean the model, right? Model means mathematical structure. That's the model. Okay? Yeah. We take the, some special structure mathematically as the model here to describe the sequence. Yeah. All right. Yeah. From the previous solution, and we just did it from that previous solution. What structure does it have? Can we, can we just uh, use the similar structure from the previous solution? Yeah, let's go back to look at the, you know, the, in the previous, yeah. Yeah. yeah, all right, here, okay. Can you see from the solution, yeah, you just look at a solution. What specific structure in the solution? You, you can, so we use it as the model. What special mathematical structure you can observe in the solution? See? Yeah. The first order has this special structure. Our second order, can we, can you naturally connect the second order basically have the similar structure as the first order, right? Yeah. Look at the special, this is the solution. What special structure do you see? Yes. Yeah. Two to the n, yeah. Minus one, that's the minor part, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because this minus one probably related to non-homogeneous, right? For homogeneous, we don't have that minus thing, okay? This is structure we can consider for second order. Okay, yeah. Just let's assume this structure. How about that? Okay, all right. Yeah, because we have some base. That's the structure from first order solution. That's the base. Okay, all right. Yeah. Now let's quickly move to our here. The model for the sequence. We guess the structure. Because we have old experience, that's our base. When we make the guess, we we need to find yeah, some you know, something related, right? And not baseless. Not a baseless guess. We have some base. Okay. How about T to the K, this structure? T we don't know. Because the this base T, we don't know what it is. But we like to have this t to the k to model our solution. a sub k, how about that? Yeah. So this is the modeling, okay? Mathematical model for this particular problem. Okay, yeah, all right, yeah. So here we assume a sub k has this t to the k structure. Yeah. 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 This, this, this step is not easy. Yeah. Because how can you make this assumption? Right? How can you make? So, yeah. so we, you know, we use our first order solution to make this assumption. All right. Then, now, with this brave assumption, yeah, there's a very brave assumption. Now, so here, because this sequence we call geometric sequence, right? Yeah, this sequence we call a geometric sequence. Now, we will try to fit a sequence by a special geometric sequence. Try to match that. Try to match that. Yeah, it's hard, but let's see if we can choose appropriate T to match that A sequence. Because we have freedom to choose T, right? 
T is unknown. T is unknown. That means we can choose appropriate T to fit our target sequence, right? Ta target sequence, A sequence. Yeah. All right. Here. We, yeah. So when we fit it, let us ignore the initial condition first. Yeah. We know we need, to, we need to satisfy the initial condition, but let's look at the major part, right? Yeah. Initial condition, let's delay it. Yeah. Let's take care of the major part, you know, the recurrence relation, that major part. Yeah. All right. So ignore the initial condition yeah. temporarily. Yeah. All right. Question. Can we find a solution with the structure? Yeah. Now we need to determine the T value such that the T sequence satisfies this major recurrence relation. That's the goal. Okay? All right. Yeah. Let's plug in. Yeah. So now we can, we can plug in, right? Yeah? All right. So we solve this equation. T to the K equals t to the k minus 1 plus t to the k minus 2. Okay? Yeah. This equation, this special equation, this algebraic equation, it is simpler than the original recurrence equation, right? This is a simple algebraic equation. Yeah. And we can further simplify it. All right. After cancellation, do division by t to the k minus 2, do that division, we get this simple algebraic equation. t squared equals t plus 1. Can we solve this equation? Yeah. It's a quadratic equation. We have the quadratic formula to solve this equation, right? Yeah. So we know there are two roots for this quadratic equation. Yeah. Yeah, let's write a standard form for the quadratic equation. t squared minus t minus 1 equals 0. Yeah. So then we apply the standard quadratic formula. Yeah. There are two solutions. The first one, t1, equals 1 plus root 5 over 2, and t2 equals 1 minus root 5 over 2. Two real solutions, real numbers. What's the conclusion? After we find these two solutions, what is the conclusion you can get here? Oh, that's important. Now you tell me why T2 cannot be the solution. Yeah. Here, don't worry about Fibonacci numbers first. So here, our current temper you know, our current goal, we just want to find a sequence that satisfies this recurrence relation. Yeah. Nothing to do with Fibonacci, because Fibonacci numbers, you have to make it fix, uh, fit the given initial condition. Here, we skip that initial condition. So it may not be the Fibonacci numbers. Yeah. Just, the, just the sequence, just the par part of the original problem. Okay. So if we remove the assumption of the Fibonacci numbers, why t cannot be negative number, right? Yeah. I mean, just a generic sequence. The sequence, you can choose positive number, you can choose negative number. You just choose a real number. t is a, not necessary to be an integer. So here t, t is not an integer. Yeah. It's fine. If the number Number, sorry, T1, yeah, so, so at this point, do not connect to Fibonacci C numbers. Yeah. So right here, so we just want to find the sequence that satisfy that recurrence relation. That's enough, okay? Question. Yeah. Don't look at the initial condition yet. We delay it. 
we haven't get there. All right, we haven't get there. Now we're halfway. All right, we're halfway. So don't jump too fast. All right. So that's the initial condition. That's the last step. We fix that. Some somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. Here, the conclusion just T one can give us one solution sequence, right? T two can give us another solution sequence, right? Do you agree with that? So here, can do you agree? We get two solutions with two different sequences as the two solutions. Do you agree with that? Yeah. That's this conclusion is important. So we write down our, you know, conclusion for the step. Halfway, halfway, but we get this result. The remaining half, we will apply this result to for the remaining half to get that Fibonacci numbers. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's see the second half. The first half we completed. We get two, two sequence solutions. All right. All right. We have two special solutions for that recurrence relation. Yeah. Yeah. Here from this algebraic equation, you know these two solutions. Two so give us two sequences. Okay. Yeah. Each sequence it satisfy recurrence relation, right? If we use T one, we plug into the re Original recurrence. Do you think this equality is satisfied? We plug in because we saw from there, right? Yeah. So it is satisfied. Yeah. But if we plug in T two, T two into that recurrence relation, do you think it it is satisfied? The equality. Yes, both correct. Both correct, because we derive t one t two from there, right? Yeah. All right. Now you have two solutions for the recurrence relation. Then the next step is important. Another critical step here. Next step. Yeah. Now we have two solutions. Can you generate some new solutions from these two solutions? That question. Now we want to generate new solutions. Yeah, because each one may not may not fit our goal, right? Yeah. But can we combine the two solutions to make a new solution that could fit our goal? That idea. We combine two solutions to get a new solution. Here, the question: How do you combine two solutions? How do you combine two solutions? There is an important concept here. All right. Let's go back to this. The name of this recurrence relation. What do we call it? Go back to our long name. There is a keyword in that long name. Which one you feel is useful here? The long name, second order, linear, homogeneous recurrence relation with constant, you know, coefficients. Linear, linear is important. Linear property here. Linear equation, linear equation. Why linear equation is important here? We want to take advantage of that property. Linear equation. So this that linear keyword give us a property called linearity property. Linearity property. Okay. Yeah. Linearity property tell us how to combine two solutions to get a new solution. That's the importance of that linearity property. How to combine two solutions to get a new solution by the linearity property. Yeah, 
how to combine. Yeah. So there is a new special way to combine two solutions. Yeah. It's called a linear combination. Yeah. Have you heard of this concept, linear combination? Yeah. Here, we need to use that concept here, linear combination. OK? All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Here. Yeah. How do you use two solutions? Yeah. Still, not, not, not to that initial condition, that point yet. Okay. All right. Yeah. So here we want to do the linear combination way to combine two s s solutions for a new solution. Yeah. Yeah. First, let me explain this concept. What's the meaning of the linear combination of two variables x and y? How do we write an expression that is a linear combination of x and y? Yeah. Ax plus by. A constant coefficient, b another constant coefficient. Yeah. Yeah. So we can use any value for a and b, capital A and capital B. Yeah. But we just want the structure. Capital A times x plus capital B times y. Put them together, add them together, so we get this linear combination of two variables. Okay? That's the concept. Linear combination concept. All right. So let us borrow that concept. Try to apply the, this linear combination idea right here for our two solutions. We want to combine two solutions. Can we make a linear combination of two solutions? Okay, yeah, yeah, so good idea, right? Yeah, all right. Let's do linear combination of T1 solution and a T2 solution, two solutions. Yeah, all right, yeah. All right, that is A times T1 sequence plus B times T2 sequence. How about that? This is a linear combination. Okay. We treat this expression as the general solution. Because the linearity property of the original recurrence relation tells us this, we can choose any A and any B, and this must be a new solution. Can you see that? This whole expression, if we plug in into the original recurrence relation, it must be another solution for any capital A, any capital B. Yeah, right? you can easily see that. Okay. Yeah, linear combination, yeah. linearity property. Yeah. If you don't have the linearity property, then you don't have this property. Okay? Then you don't have this property. Okay? All right. Now, so we enjoy this linearity property. Yeah. So we know for any capital A, any capital B, this expression must be a solution of the original recurrence relation. Okay? Now we are ready to fix the last step, initial condition problem. Yeah. So the question becomes, can we choose appropriate capital A, appropriate capital B to fit the given initial conditions, the two given initial conditions? We just choose appropriate A and appropriate capital B, such that initial condition it, Two initial conditions are satisfied. How about that idea? Because we have some freedom in capital A, capital B. So we take advantage of that freedom to help us fix two initial conditions. How about that? Yeah. Two unknowns, capital A, capital B, they are unknowns. Two unknowns to help us fix two initial conditions. How about that? OK, all right. To determine a capital B, plug in. How about that? Just plug in the number. K equals zero. Then the solution should give us the first initial condition. K equals one. It should give us second initial condition. Okay. So let's just plug in those numbers. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Two initial conditions. Let's do the work here, okay? Yeah. Determine 
coefficients, capital A and a capital B. All right. Such that the initial condition is satisfied. When A equals zero, let's plug in the formula. Little a zero should be equal to this expression. Okay, yeah. The exponent zero, two parentheses equals one, so capital A plus capital B equals zero. Okay, so capital B equals negative capital A. The second, a one, little a one, a equals one, a one equals this expression. Yeah, all right. Yeah, it should be equal to 1, the whole thing. Then let's simplify it. Because b equals negative a. Can we replace b by negative a? So b is gone. We only have a left. Yeah. Then we combine the terms. Right? Combine the terms. Yeah. Yeah. 1, 1. Yeah, because here you need to use negative a, right? Replace b. Yeah. So 1, 1 cancel out. Minus negative root 5 plus root 5. So you have 2 root 5 over 2. 2 and 2 cancel out. So you get a root 5 times A equals 1. So capital A equals 1 over root 5. And capital B equals negative 1 over root 5. So both constant coefficients are determined by the two initial conditions. Can we write the final formula? Yeah. So the final formula here, in order to make it simple, we use the golden ratio symbol phi, 1 plus root 5 over 2, golden ratio phi, and 1 minus root 5 over 2, that's the 1 over. Negative 1 over phi. Yeah. Negative 1 over phi. Yeah. All right. So with these two, symbols, expressions, we have the, this final formula explicitly in this way. How about that? A, B, you know, common factor taking out. That's the final Fibonacci formula. That's the whole derivation procedure. And this method we can treat as a systematic method to solve all the linear second order recurrence relation, homogeneous recurrence relation. Yeah. If we use different coefficients, then we can use the same way to do it. How about that? Okay? Same same method. Yeah. Yeah. Here you can see we find the final solution. How about that? Think about the thinking. So in this whole process, think about the derivation, the thinking. Yeah. So you need to follow this whole story, yeah. the logic, you know, and to try to comprehend you know, all the details. Yeah. This would give you, so you learn from this example, problem solving. Basic method. So here, look at how many pieces we put together to get a final solution. Okay. Mathematical model, right? How do we get a mathematical model? Okay? Yeah. Yeah. How do we combine the two solutions to form a new solution? by using the linearity property. All right, yeah, see, yeah. And, uh, you know, then all the other details. Yeah. All right, yeah. Although, so this is a, you know, math problem, yeah. But the thinking can be used to s solve other computing problems, right? Yeah, because the thinking, in our mind, that thinking mechanism can be applied to more general problems, right? Yeah. Not just this, this math problem. Okay? Yeah. This thinking. 
All right, yeah. yeah. So for this class, I hope yeah, you can learn all these basic problem solving thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Try to comprehend. Try to make, you know, these methods your own method. Yeah. So that's important. Okay. Yeah. So you can, you can solve future similar problems in this way. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Although we have, we have ten minutes. Yeah. Although we have ten minutes. Yeah. But. But if I start, uh, you know, if I start a you know, new module, so it, it may not be, yeah, may not be good, yeah, because I have to stop it after ten minutes. So the next time you you forget this ten minutes, right? Yeah, so it's better I make a complete story next time, yeah. But with this ten minutes, uh, let me talk about. Uh, in the programming project, remember there is an option, right? There is a, you know, option you can earn extra credit. So let me talk about that idea a little bit, okay? Yeah. So the, here, just the idea. Okay, option in project one. Okay. All right. So we, so here, the problem is we want to evaluate a monomial efficiently. That's the goal. So evaluate a monomial. Okay? Definitely, we want to find the most efficient way. So here, this is a, you know, theoretical exploration yeah. because in the real world if you want to evaluate monomial the best way you just use repeated squaring although repeated squaring may not be the best solution may not be optimal but close to optimal right yeah yeah so you do not because it's so close to the optimal so you do not need to spend more work to get optimal one right yeah because your improvement is just one or two multiplications. But the amount of work you do, much more than that. Much more than two multiplications, let's say. Okay? All right. Yeah, but here, the thinking is important. So the reason I ask you to do it in this way, because the thinking is important. The, the thinking, we need to use dynamic programming. So you can practice dynamic programming here to get an optimal solution. Yeah. So here, you have a chance to practice that idea, dynamic programming. Yeah. Because that topic, that topic is an advanced topic. So that, that's the reason I put it as an option. Okay. You do not have to do it. If you feel hard to understand, then you do not have to do it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. If you like to try, yeah, it's a good good experience. You can get some dynamic programming experience. All right. Dynamic programming. Yeah. So the, in general, there are two different ways to implement dynamic programming. One is called a bottom up. Another is called top down. Top down and bottom up. Okay? All right. Top down, you do recursion from top. Okay? Like Fibonacci number, top, F sub n, that's top. Then lower, top down. Okay? At the end, you get to the base case, that's top down. Okay? Bottom up, you start from bottom. Okay? The Fibonacci number, you start from F0, F1, F2, F3. Bottom up, top down, bottom up. Okay, so dynamic program typically these two different ways. Okay. Yeah. 
All right, so here, this one, we use the bottom up way. We use the bottom up way. Yeah. Okay? All right. So, all right. So now, get to our problem. So remember, I plan to ask you to find the optimal solution, optimal solution for monomial. So here, yeah. so monomial, x to the n, monomial, so we need to, you need to find optimal solutions for and in the range between 100 and 200. Okay? Yeah. Well, and in this range. So you need to tell me, so do calculate the monomial in what specific way to get optimal solution. That's the, the task I plan to give you. Okay? All right. Here. Yeah. Bottom up. Yeah. So let we do this way. Bottom up. We start from bottom. Okay? When A equals 1, do you know how to do it? A equals 1. Yeah. Then A equals 2, do you know how to do it? Yeah. Yeah. Going up. A equals 3, do you know how to do it? A equals 4, do you know how to do it? So you, you need to derive some formula to tell you how to move it up. Finally, you get to the range between 100 and 200 yeah, here, yeah, because when you get a 100, you already you completed this bottom part. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. N equals 0. One, two, three, all right? You already build your table. So what's the dynamic programming? Programming, we build a dictionary, right? We build a table, dictionary. This is our table, dictionary, okay? So we build our dictionary, okay? All right, so we can look up our dictionary. Yeah. And uh, you know, up to this n equals 99, okay? Yeah, all right? But you do not need to produce the output yeah, for this dictionary, the foundation of the dictionary. You do not need to generate the output, right? Yeah. But when you get 100, you start to produce the output. 101 produce the output. 102, to, because 101, 102, when you're moving up, you need to use the data for the lower part. You need to use the data. You, already produce in the dictionary, yeah. and you need to find a formula how to use the lower level solutions to help you produce higher level solutions. That's the dynamic programming. Programming, yeah, I explained before, programming the meaning here is Doing a table is called a programming, okay? So you mean, the old meaning of programming. Yeah. People just uh, organize data in a table, they call it programming, okay? Dynamic programming, you make a dynamic table. Our table is dynamic, right? Because you keep adding new data into your table. That's a dynamic table, okay? So that's the name, dynamic programming meaning. How about that? Okay. You produce a dynamic table. That idea. Okay? All right. Yeah. So that formula I will give you next time. Right. Yeah. I will give you later. Yeah. Here, I use the 10 minutes to describe the general idea. Yeah. But the key, the last the final key, that formula, that recursion formula, it's a recursion formula. We can get, you know, next time, yeah. future, yeah. okay? All right, yeah. So that's the, you know, today's class.